Hello, lover friends! Welcome back! New week, new releases, new video all for you. Let me tell you about some of the latest additions to the framework. When you interact with the session, you can now exclude values as well. So I have here put a few values into my session, like if I want to show stats, use the dark mode, display graphs, language, currency, etc. You get the picture. So some preferences which we can get back with all from our session. But now we want to exclude some of the values to so only get a few of them back. And this is something that we now can do with the session except method, which is new. So we're going to provide an array with the values that we don't want to get back. So for example, show stats and display graphs like this. And let's see, return it and you can see we get our result back without those values. Pretty simple, but pretty handy too. Thank you, Volodya. Next, we have a new assertion when testing a few. So inside this test here, I'm uh, making sure when a user is logged in, when the view is created contributions, we see the text contributions. And this is working because inside this view, we only show this headline if the user is logged in. Now we want to test the opposite when the user is not logged in. So let's copy this line here from the first test where we're creating the few contributions and we are asserting that we see contributions which will now fail because we don't see this. But actually we want to test something different. We want to use this new method now, this new assertion called assert view empty. So this way we're making sure that the view is empty. And now when we run the test, this works because it is empty. Thank you, Twite. And there is another new assertion you can use while testing and this one is about pushed jobs. So here in this test, I want to make sure that when I release a podcast and I run this artisan comment that these jobs are being pushed to the queue, but we're faking the queue system so they're not being called in real. But here in this command, you can see how we dispatch those jobs. And when we run this test, now you can see that this is working. But maybe you also want to test something different, like how many jobs are being pushed to the queue which is also useful and we can do this now with the assert count method. Let's try it with two and it will fail because here yeah, we push three jobs to the queue. So that's why this test is failing. So if we change this now, you should see that this test is now passing and yes, it does. So this means you can use this method now as an addition to the others or you can get rid of the others if you're just interested in how many jobs were pushed. Thank you, Volodier, again for this new feature. Then there is a new addition to the string helper in Laravel. In Laravel, if you have a string like what's new in Laravel, everything is lowercase here, you can use the string helper with the title method in order to get a capitalized version out of it like you can see here. But yeah, there are different styles to what means um, a title style. And we can use now a different method which is called APA. So this is now a specific style here where some things are a little bit different. Let's try this out as well. But yeah, maybe let's bring this next to each other so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So first we have the title method and then we have the APA method. And now you can see the in and what's new in level in the first time is the capitalized I and then the second one it's lowercase i. So this means there are now different styles to titles which you can yeah, use whatever you prefer, but now in level you have title and the APA method. Thank you, Adam. And I got two more for you. First, we talk about dynamic max tries. So here inside one of my jobs, I have a public property defined tries, which is set to three. So this means the queue system will try to um, work with this job three times before this job is called um, failed. So this was already before, but now we have something new that we can do as well. Instead of using this property, we can also use a method called tries. Now here we have a little bit more option how to get the number that we want, like here in this example from the config. If you have both defined, the public property will be used first before the method. But now you can also use this method, which is pretty handy. Thank you, D. And last, our very own James introduced a new clamp method to the number helper. 
So here in this example, we are dealing with a value of 500, which we get from outside the application or inside the application, doesn't matter, but we only want to deal with values between a specific range, zero and 255 in this case. So this means what are we going to do with this 500? Well, we don't want to throw an exception, we want to somehow handle this as well. And this is now where this new clamp method comes in which is now a new method on the number helper. So let's call it and it receives the three values. First is the number, in our case that's the value, and then the range minimum and the range maximum. And now let's see what we get if we try to run this. We are now trying to figure out what 500 means for these values. And what we get back now is 255, because this is now the closest value in our range to our given value. If we change this to minus five, now you can see um, the closest value within our range is zero. And what we can also do is we can now use a value which is inside our range like 111, and this way we get back the number that we provided. So this is a great way how to deal with numbers that you want to keep inside a specific range. And of course, I already knew about this clamp method from other programming languages and what it does and how it works and that it can be useful for graphics programming, game development, audio processing and more. Thank you, James. These were some of the latest additions to the framework. Which ones are you going to use in your next project? Please let me know about this in the comments. See you the next time. 